What's up guys welcome back to another video so today we're going to talk about the best attackers and the best defenders for season 16 of battlegrounds so this season is going to be pretty mystic heavy because of this node that is going to boost our our mystic on attack so whenever a mystic attacker nullifies a buff on the defender they inflict a neutralized passive of 30 30 percent potency for 20 seconds so that lasts for a really long time and then you can max it out at three so you know, you still don't have a 100% chance to fail the opponent's buffs without neutralize, but it's like 90%, so it's pretty high chance. And then whenever a buff of the defender is prevented by this neutralizes, the attacker passively gains 3% of max power. So, you know, Mystics are good, but they don't really get, like, insane benefits so that you only have Mystics in your deck. You know, it's it's nice to have, uh, but honestly, if, even with the, without this Mystic node, you will probably use more mystics because of uh, the other two or three nodes that are up next. So whenever you close the defender, they're going to get a fury every three seconds. So, you know, you might just want to nullify that to, look, you know, get some extra power gain from MD, prevent them from getting some attack. And then also they gain extra attack for each buff on them. And then if you jump into the glider circuit week one and two, there is another 25% more attack for each buff. So like if they got like three buffs, that's like 150% more damage or more attack. So like specials might be pretty tough uh, into your block. And then there's also this, this zero to hero node. So every 15 seconds, the defender gains indestructible and unblockable buff for five seconds. And those are bought, paused indefinitely unless you're close to the defender. So this is like the node that Eternity of Pain Hercules has. So if you don't want to lose too much time, because, you know, those are just paused, you have to be close to the defender or prevent them from getting the buff or nullifying the buff. So, you know, the, the, the two ways preventing and nullifying comes from Mystic Champions, pretty much. Those are the champions that nullify and have neutralize on them. So, you know, if you want to be faster, you should use those champions. But then week three and four is going to be a little bit more interesting. We got the same Mystic node, but also there's Footloose now. Which means that when they throw a special, they can evade and they are unstoppable for uh, 7 seconds. And the evade is 25% chance to evade. So it's quite high. And then they're also, when they have 1 bar of power, they gain a fury. 2 bars is a precision and 3 bars is a cruelty. Not that big of a deal. But here, for each buff of the defender, the attacker has their defensive ability accuracy reduced by 15%. So sometimes you fight someone that has like a lot of buffs. Maybe your parries fail. That is the issue there. But, you know, the only problem is, like, Footloose. So as long as you fight counter to that, which is, again, mostly Mystics, because those are buffs, so you can nullify them. It says evade buff. So you can definitely nullify them and just, you know, deal with them. So now we're going to talk about the best defenders that I feel like are going to be good for those metas. I think, in general, Science defenders are going to be the best because most people will use Mystic Champions to, you know, nullify those buffs, get some benefit from the Mystic node, so mostly science are probably going to be like the most troublesome, I would say. And uh, Joe Fixit and Hulk are two that I think are going to be okay. I don't think they're going to be insane, but they do have a lot of HP. They are pretty tanky themselves. You know, Hulk is pretty nice with inequity. Same thing with Joe Fixit. He's got his weaknesses as well. And he's got like a short power gain if he's like high sig. So you can spam a lot of those specials. And then two of those defenders that I feel like are going to be probably really, really not like difficult to face but you're probably going to take some time to fight them to take them down i think overseer because overseer is immune to stagger nullify and fate seal so the only way to prevent this guy from getting you know the charges sorry the footloose evade and unstoppable is literally by just getting a neutralize on him which would mean you would have to use a mystic champion so that's immediately a class disadvantage champion so the fight is immediately like harder to deal with and then this is the, the same thing here, but you know, we've we've done Tigra versus Thing many, many times if you use Tigra. So Thing might not be that tough if you got a Tigra, but if you don't, he is gonna be a little bit annoying because you just cannot nullify or prevent, you know, his, or you can prevent, but you can't really nullify his buffs or stagger. And then someone that I think actually might be a little bit annoying is Spot. Because if you don't have, let's say you don't have a slow, or a skill jamber that had slow. Let's say you don't have Shang-Chi or like Stealth Spidey. Spot, how you want to fight him is basically counter uh, after his, his specials. You want to attack him after his specials, like interrupt him basically. And with Footloose, you won't be able to do that. 
which means whenever he throws a special he's gonna get like spots and you're not gonna be able to remove one when you're attacking him after the special and like pausing him for a bit because that of that food loose so i think spot is gonna be a little bit difficult but he can be the easiest defender if you know how to fight spot because he actually has a buff immunity sp1 so if you bait a special one from spot he's never gonna get unstoppable or any evades as long as you keep baiting a special one because you know if you bait special two then nothing happens so he can be tough but he can also be very very easy now moving on to the skill class there's not too many champions that i think are going to be like insane here i just include killmonger korg and kingpin because they have like a lot of hp korg and killmonger are seven stars as well and the more specials they throw the more time you're going to take for in the fight unless you use some of the staggers but uh yeah i just include them because they have a lot of hp now from the tech class i think uh red skull because he's immune to Nolfa, Fatal, and Stagger. Same thing as Thing. And also Viv. Same thing. They are probably going to take a little bit more time. Unless you have Neutralize. So I think Tiger is actually going to be like a really, really good defender. Or sorry, really good attacker in this meta for sure. And up next we have some Cosmic Champions. So I think Galen is a bit annoying. Because, you know, obviously... He gets more buffs, which means he gets more of his planetary mass. But also, he's immune to fate to the nullify. But again, he can be like the easiest defender if you got Tiger. If you got someone that can neutralize like Wiccan or um, what's it called? Rintra. So he can be like the easiest defender. You only want to throw him down if the opponent doesn't have one of those champs or those three champions. And then up next, I think Hulkling might be a little, bit, a little bit of a pain because of how many buffs he has. Same thing with Gorf for this specific week. Three and four, because like if they have like five buffs, seventy-five percent chance your parries fail. So you know I don't think they're gonna be that big of a deal, but something to uh, keep in mind. And also I think Hyperion and Arcus, if you don't have a Mystic against them, they're gonna be really tough to fight because they just throw a lot of specials. They got a lot of power gain, which means so much food loose, so much uh, unstoppable evade, and all that fun stuff. And then from the Mystic class. I think every single Mystic here is going to be a little bit of a pain because they have the additional power gain from MD. But one that I think is actually going to be worse than the others is Longshot. Because Longshot has increased ability accuracy, which means if you try to use Archangel against Longshot to prevent his Unstoppable and Evade through ability accuracy, you're not going to be able to do that. So that means he's still going to get those Unstoppables even if you have like three newer toxins on him. So he could definitely be a sneaky defender and also a very, very good attacker. But uh, yeah, let's, let's go over the best attackers now. So from the science class, we got She-Hulk. She does have a slow for that footloose meta, so that's pretty good. Same thing with Quicksilver, Red Guardian, Silk. Titania has a stagger on her heavy or two staggers if she has Haymaker. And same thing with Anti-Venom, he's got a stagger. Now, one thing I forgot to mention about defenders... You do not want to throw someone that's buff immune on defense because they pretty much do nothing. This meta is like all about getting buffs and, you know, preventing those buffs. So if he can't trigger buffs on you, that's not too great. That's why I said spot is going to be like the easiest defender if you bait SP once. Uh, same thing with Titania or like Cassie, Ant-Man, those that, you know, do not get buffs. Now, for the skill class, Shang-Chi and Stealth Suit Spider-Man are going to be amazing when someone throws down a science defender and you just want to deal with footloose without using a mystic champion i think shang chi is very very good same thing with stealth and also valkyrie can like ignore the unstoppable from the footloose but there is still a chance they can evade so keep that in mind i think hitting the block would be really nice for valkyrie i might actually include her in my deck i'm not too sure and then actually from the mutant class there is obviously archangel but then there's also Danny Moonstar. Like, honestly, I'm, uh, I might actually use my Danny Moonstar for Footloose meta because she has a really long slow, like a 20 second passive slow, which means you can't even deal with like skill champions that purify. And then I think Magneto might be pretty good against metal champions if you have one like uh, really high racked up. And then from the tech champions, I don't think anyone will shine too much, but you know, tech champions can power control really well, like Hulkbuster, for example. If you just never let them throw a special, 
with your SP2 power uh, power drain, it's almost like you counter footloose because like they only they need to throw a special to actually stall you uh, in the match. So I think champions like Hulkbuster or like Guardian who has a power drain, Phantman is going to be really good. And then from the Cosmic class, I think CGR and Hulkling are going to bring the nukes. CGR can even prevent, um, with his damnation, he prevent, prevent the buffs. Hulkling can probably nuke them if you throw a special two and then, you know, do, do the combo with the relic. He's probably going to be pretty good. And then from the Mystic class, pretty much anyone here is going to be amazing. I mean, if you just combine every Mystic champion with extra MD, which means a lot more power gain, they are going to be amazing. Like Diablo is going to be insane. Chavez, if you have extra buffs. Absorbing Man actually is going to be really good for the first week because right here, every 15 seconds, they're going to gain Destructible and Unblockable for five seconds. But if we go into Absorbing Man's kit, it says here that Unstoppable and Unblockable buffs have 90% reduced duration, which means you're instantly going to get a ton of power gain. So Absent is still is, is going to be even better now. And then obviously Juggernaut is actually free now. So Juggernaut is going to be insane. Longshot is going to be a very uh, good champion MVP for sure. Kushala potentially pretty good as well. Tiger is going to be like the savior when you just don't have a counter to like one of those science champions. Because she can pretty much do anyone. Unless it's someone like Gore where he like starts with buffs instantly. And you can't really neutralize after. Mordo actually might be an interesting one because he does have his own power gain. And like if he throws a special three with those extra buffs that, you know, give him more attack, he actually might be a little bit crucial on defense. But I think this meta isn't going to be anything too, too special. I think it's going to be pretty straightforward. I am excited for um, week one and two for that zero to hero, but I'm most, mostly excited for week three and four for footloose because that definitely seems a little bit more challenging. Um, and also with that defensibility accuracy with when the opponent has buffs might actually mess you up So you gotta keep that in mind, but yeah guys, hopefully this video helped you and if it did please give it a like subscribe and I'll see you in the next one